Engaging with wildlife is good for the soul. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how to find, observe, and even photograph one of Britain's most elusive and beautiful animals. This week, we're taking a look at the badger. Right, okay, so we're going to try and get some pictures and also observe some badgers. Now, the first thing to do is to try and find these creatures. Now, I suppose the most important thing you need to know about badgers is that they're mainly nocturnal. Now, there is a caveat to that. Obviously, they normally like to feed at, at night time, but at certain times of the year, i.e. in the summer and the spring, when the days are longer, what that means is there's not as much time at night for them to feed in the darkness. So what you tend to find is that they'll come out in the early evening before it gets dark. And obviously that's the time you can see them and also you can try and get some images of them. So that's the first thing to remember. I would say that from sort of May uh, to about August is the best time to see them because you've got a better chance of them being out earlier trying to get some food before it gets dark. The second thing to be aware of is the habitat that badgers like to live in and really, the, I mean I can only go from the experience I've had, um, I've found them mainly in sort of areas where you've got perhaps small woodlands and fields quite rolling countryside. Um, that's a good place to start looking for them so if you've got an area, area near you like that then that's what I'd, I'd say to you that's a good place to start to see if you can find a badger set. Now again you do get them in large gardens even in towns um, so that's not the be all and end all it's just as I say from my point of view that's where I've always looked from in the past and we're always found them it seems to be a like a mixture of fields with nice big field boundaries and big hedges and little woodlands all that sort of type of environment is where they seem to feel really at home right so if you're in the right sort of countryside for finding badgers you then need to know what signs to look for to tell you that there's actually badgers in the area. Now, the best thing to look for really is a badger set. And a lot of the time, what you'll see with these is you'll see a hole in the ground or several up to literally dozens of holes in the ground. They generally try, tend to be on the edge of woodlands or in bankings or um, in hedgerows. And you'll see a, a hole which is badger size for a badger to get down probably about 20 inches across um, that's probably about 35 centimeters 40 centimeters and you'll tend to find there's a lot of spoil on the outside of the hole so where they've dug it all out they'll spread it all out and you'll see all the soil there that's, that's been dug out of the tunnels underneath what you also might see and a good sign to look for to show you actually that a badger set is active is that you'll often find that in the entrance to these holes there'll be a lot of grass, um, dry grass. Now that grass is the stuff that they've they actually collect um, and take down into the nest sites inside the inside the um, the set and basically to line where they're sleeping. But they change that so they'll bring some new stuff in and throw old stuff out and you'll often see either new stuff waiting to go in or old stuff that's been discarded in the entrance to the set. And that really, even if you, know, you find holes and you're not sure whether it's active, that'll give you a good indication that there's, an act there's some activity going on there. Now obviously something else that you can look for uh, when you're looking for um, evidence of badges is uh, things like runs. Now, Obviously every animal that, that goes through an area will leave, leave a gap. So if it's coming through a hedge, there'll be an obvious gap where something's come through. Now a couple of ways you can tell whether it's a badger. One, they tend to use the same runs a lot. So you'll find that it's a well-worn track. It's not just something that's come through and then disappeared off and it never goes down that route again. But something else you can also look for, if you get a track and it's say going under a fence or a barbed wire fence, just check and see if you can see any hairs caught on the barbed wire or on the wood underneath the fence. You may even be able to tell, you might see a black or a white, quite coarse hair, and you'll know then that it's badger. I mean, if it's ginger, you're thinking fox. So that's another important thing to look for. Right, I've brought you under here because this is a really big badger set. I don't really want to spend too much time under here because I'm quite close to the entrance holes and, I, I, you know, with all my videos, as you'll know, the disturbance of the animals is the thing that I want to avoid at all costs. But I just really wanted to show you these tree trunks. 
and you can see actually if you take a close look at them they're all rubbed and there's soil on the up on the tops of the the bark here and that's basically that's where badgers have been rubbing and scratching themselves and it's a really important sign to look for at, at and around a set you often find you know these tree stumps that have been rubbed and uh, you know it's quite obvious that a badger's using them to have a really good scratch so it tells you a there's badgers in the area and b that it's an active set right i just want to show you another sign that there's actually active badgers on this site at the moment if you see here in the grass there are all these little holes that have been dug down only a couple of inches and obviously looking for earthworms and things and there's dead little lumps of grass around this field's absolutely littered with this so again that's another thing to look for to show you that a there's badgers in the area and b it's an active site right final point and you know we had to get to this at some point during this uh, video and that's the subject of poo now badger poo tends to be the quite um, clean animals in the way that they just don't go to the loo anywhere what they generally do is they have something called a latrine now that is normally it's an indication you've got badgers in the area but I would never rely on it to say look you know we're right next to a set or this is this is where the badges are, are directly in the in the area and that's simply because what tends to happen is they have a latrine area located more or less on the boundary of their um, territory so you know if you find one you're gonna have to have a little bit more looking round to try and find the actual set on most occasions now, I actually brought you to this wood here because in previous years I've um, photographed badgers here but I haven't been back for a couple of years I've been using a new area which is slightly closer to home but I knew where the latrine was here and it was actually quite close to the set it's probably about 100 meters away um, and I've just walked here trying to find it and it's gone so they've obviously relocated it to somewhere else but perhaps their sets got bigger you know their territories got bigger so they've moved it on to somewhere else away from the set so I have actually found um, an area where there's a couple of little uh, latrines should we call them uh, let's call it um, an ensuite if you like so this is where you know if they get caught short this is where the badgers will come which is quite close to the set there will be a massive latrine somewhere else but this woodland is huge and I have nowhere uh, no idea of where to find it now because I've not been here for such a long time so anyway, if you look down at my feet here, this is, is basically how um, a badger will go to the toilet. They generally dig a hole probably about 8 to, probably about eight to 10 inches, so um, you know, sort of 20 centimetres max depth. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll poo into that hole and then they'll poo into the same hole until the thing's actually, that's really overflowing in some cases. And generally the poo in those holes tends to be quite... Um, liquid so they eat a lot of earthworms and you tend to sort of get a grey ooze in there on this occasion this one as you can see is not it's got a lot of seeds and things and that's probably related to the time of year if you think about it and you know people who live in the UK now at the minute we've had quite a dry period so the ground's really hard so it's difficult to get to the earthworms but what we have got is fruit and things and berries and seeds you know on the trees and on the bushes and obviously the the badgers are taking those to supplement their diet right while we wait for these badgers hopefully to come out um, I suppose we need to talk a little bit about um, how you position yourself near the set to get some images or just observe the badgers now if you remember what I said earlier of the sensors that a badger uses by far its most important is its sense of smell it, it can really easily smell you at a distance so with that in mind when you position yourself near a set to take some images you always want to have the set in front of you and the wind blowing from the set towards you in your face basically because obviously that then means that when the badgers come up they can't smell you the winds blowing from them to me if it's in the opposite direction blowing towards the set over me then they'll smell me straight away. And what I always do, I always use the wind turbines that we have around the area. 
Um, so when I arrive, even if I check the weather before I come, you know, and check which direction the wind's supposed to, supposed to be blowing, I always just, we've got so many wind turbines in the area, I just check on the hills nearby and see which way the wind's going. And that'll tell me which side of the set I need to come to to set up. Some days it's impossible to get a, a decent image um, because there's no areas where you can set up that's, you know, not got, um, you're in the trees so it's dark almost before, well it's really really dark before the sun goes down so you know there's, um, there's not enough light to take any images anyway. So yeah that's what you need to do, really have, pay attention to that wind direction. Now as I said the hearing is also really good and I think as long as you're downwind and you sit quietly, um, you know, no talking or anything like that, you've got a good chance of the badgers coming out. Um, sometimes the, the thing that alerts them for me is the sound of the shutter on the camera, so if you have got silent shutter, whatever that means, silence relative really on a lot of cameras, uh, you know, just engage that to, so that you don't alert the badgers that you're there. But sometimes that actually works in your favour because what it does, it gets the badgers to stop and look up. Um, so that's another point that you need to bear in mind is that the hearing is really good so you have to be really quiet. Now on eyesight that's not really as important and what I always try and do, I've been as close as sort of three metres away from, from a badger um, and it's not known I've there, it's not been able to see me. But what I do try and do is if I've, I can put my back up against something, so a bush or a tree, just to break up my shape really. Um, and then the badger is generally unaware that you're there if you follow the first two points that I raised. So, yeah, as long as you're um, not sort of stood up as like a silhouette, generally you should be able to sit there quietly and they won't know that you're there. So we've turned up on site, the wind's in the right direction, we've found a, sp a space where we can sit near the set to wait for the badgers to come out, we're downwind, um, we're really quiet, we've managed to get our back up against a bush or a tree and we're just sitting waiting. Now the things that you can do to improve your chances, I think it's well known that badgers really like peanuts and also peanut butter they'll go for as well. So what I often do, I'll just take a small bag of peanuts and I'll just put a couple of handfuls out now if you look at the little dig holes that I showed you earlier where badgers have been digging for worms, sometimes I actually use those. I'll put the peanuts in one of those holes. Now the reason I do that is because if I'm taking an image, the last thing I want is a nice grass bank with a huge pile of peanuts in my shot. I want it to appear as natural as possible. So these little hollows that they've made, they've dug out, are often quite useful. Now what I would say is I only ever put a small amount of peanuts out what you don't want to do is get the badger to be reliant on that food source. If you're going up there, you know, every night for four or five weeks throughout the summer and you're trying to get images, what you know, you really don't want the badgers coming to rely on that as a food source. So again, just, just sparingly, um, you know, use peanuts or peanut butter. What I also do as well, if I'm uh, photographing, if, if I've seen that there's a particular place that they always come out on, what I might sometimes do is just take a pair of um, little shears with me just to cut the tops of some of the bits of grass off because there's nothing worse than you know getting this lovely picture of a badger and what badgers tend to do they always tend to have the facing towards the floor so it's often really difficult to get that shot where there's not a stem of grass straight across the nose or through their eye so what I'll often do is just go and snip a few of those off around where I've put the peanuts so that there's nothing in the way anything that's you know sort of five six seven feet away from the badger and between you and the camera. Generally you can't see it in the shot anyway, so you don't have to do a long strip between you and the camera. It's really just anything that's right next to where the badger's gonna be putting its nose down on the floor and feeding. Right, now if we take a look at camera settings, it's really difficult to, to give you an exact um, camera setting to use for your camera. What I tend to do with my camera is shoot on aperture priority and that's just something personal to me, for wildlife anyway, that's what I do. Now, what I would suggest is that you, whatever you're doing, you aim for a shutter speed of at least 200th of a second. That's simply because, you know, you want to freeze the badger. You don't want it to be blurred because of the movement. So I think around 200th of a second, 250th of a second. And what you'll have to do with your other settings, you'll have to continually change those to make sure that you're getting that shutter speed. 
so you know I'll be fiddling with the ISO so I might start out at ISO 100 and by the time the end of the evening's done I'm at ISO 1600 um, you know and I don't really want to go any further than that because the image quality starts to degrade so and you know I might start at f7.1 or f8 to get a nice sharp picture um, but by the time I've finished I'm down at the f6.3 which is the the widest aperture that I've got on my 100-400 uh, lens and uh, you know it's just a case of constantly adjusting as the light changes which it is with most forms of photography anyway I mean I would say is because you can get quite close to badges and again the welfare of the animal always comes first so you know don't um, sort of be right on top of the animals just be at a safe distance a 300mm lens I'm sure is quite adequate on a crop sensor camera you could probably even get away with a 200 in some instances on a crop sensor camera and you know just give it a go but as I say settings wise you're going to be continually changing them as the sun starts to go down and it gets dimmer and dimmer but really you need a shutter speed of about 200th of a second at least just to ensure that that shot is is um, sharp I mean I do go below that I shoot at one, one 160th 160th of a second um, you know I'll even go to a hundredth of a second and sometimes actually when I talked about the shutter on the camera freezing the badger it, that's actually a good thing because if you take a couple of shots and you're at, at like a hundredth of a second the badger will freeze it'll freeze for a couple of seconds and that might be the shot after the one you've just taken that is pin sharp because the badger is, is frozen completely still so yeah give it a go um, and, and see how you get on right as a final point what i'd say this, this is wildlife photography so don't get disheartened if it doesn't work out straight away um you know i've been up to this site on numerous occasions sometimes for a couple of weeks and not seen one badger and then another night there'll be seven or eight of them charging round, more or less in rings around me so you do have to have a little bit of perseverance and i'm sure if you do follow these tips that i've given you today and eventually you will get to see badgers and if you're really lucky you'll get to take some photos as well right i hope you find uh, this video useful this week i've enjoyed making it i've been wanting to do this one for a while and it seemed a, an opportune time to do it as we're now in may and we have been actually enabled to travel a little bit further from our homes this is where i am is not a site where we see anybody else so um you know to come here today wasn't a particular issue as, as regards um, the COVID-19 situation but it did enable me to make this video in plenty of time for if you want to go out and watch uh, do a bit of badger watching or even photography of badgers hopefully it's given you some tips to help you go away and do that and be successful at it as always if you've got any comments or you've got any tips that you think I've missed please put them in the comments below I always love reading them and I respond to every comment if you've not subscribed to the channel then please subscribe and I will see you fairly shortly for another video cheers bye